Mr. 69 and you are joining me for round four of the AOR GT3 Pro League from the Nürburgring. Just started off our flying lap, uh, flying lap heading down into the first hairpin at turn one. Try and get as close to the apex as possible, carry as much speed as we head in towards the Mercedes Arena section. Gotta be careful not to put the power down too early there as you'll just understeer into the run out area. But if you're doing time trial lap times, apparently you can run out as wide as you want and it won't penalise your time. But yeah, coming out of it now, still avoiding trying not to call Ooh, track extend or corner cut. I may have done just then, but I'm not too sure. As we head down towards turn five and then into turn six at the forward curve. About four. Three, four temps up on our previous best time. It's not bad, seeing as we've already got pole. So, like, you can't complain when you're in when you're improving on a pole time. So, just got to keep up the momentum, try and take as much speed into the Dunlop curve as possible. Got to take a little bit too much and slide under braking. Lost about a tenth, tenth and a half or so. Heading towards the Schumacher S's, you got to keep your foot planted. Maybe like lift off a touch so you don't understeer into the gravel straight off. But yeah, now heading up towards turn 10 at the Kumo curve. Drop it down into second just at the apex so you get the turn in. Now coming, uh, coming around the bit curve. Oh, sorry, pardon me. As we now head up towards the uh, Advan Bowen. No, apparently, I didn't even realise this corner had a name. But it was just like a little right hand king. But as now we come up to the last chicane. Breaking at just where the white line going across the track is. Take, oh, if it weren't for that exit, probably lost about half a tenth, tenth, just on the exit alone. Drop it down into second as we come around the last hairpin now, hugging the apex, trying not to lose the back end as we put the power down, which we do slightly. But yeah, come across the line now, and we do a 57-1. Not too bad, not too bad. And as a little bonus for you, Atticus beat me, so I knew I had to sort of push it in coming into the last. As you can see, we're four temps up, so we're in the 56s here. But I know I had to make up time in this little chicane section and we just overcook it. Just can't believe that. But yeah, so qualifying second. I mean, it could be a lot worse, but at least we're on the front row. So now we're just going to be chasing Atticus. I've got a feeling he's going to shoot away, but 12 lights on. And away we go. But yeah, we actually got an all right start. If you, if you look at the... If you uh, rewind it and look back to when I actually selected the gear, first was selected as the green light drop, so I got a little bit luck lucky there. So coming into the first corner, we are so much later on the brakes than Atticus. I'm going to try and hang it around the outside of the Merc. But, oh, he's, le he's left the door open a little bit. We're going to... Oh! Now, it, it may look like we touched, but I, honest to God, we didn't. It was all nice and fair, clean racing. But yeah, we're still up the inside, and we've passed Atticus. Great move there. So start of the race, move up into P1, and now we've just got to try and drive off of it. So coming around the Dunlop curve, we've got about half a second lead. I'll say that, it was about up to nine tenths by the time we came out of it. Coming up towards the Schumacher S's. Looks like we've turned in a little bit too early. And three out of three races, I have done that. And they've all been on the first stint. Oh! oh. Alright, so focus and get back into it. Lap 8 now. I think this is when we come in for our first pit stop. We decided that as Atticus was just driving away, and I know I know the way he does his strategy, he fills the tank up all the way. And then he just only does <coughs> sorry, pardon me. He only does uh, tire changes uh, for the pit stops. Whereas I will literally set the amount of fuel to however much I want for a certain stint. And then I'll just keep doing that to make the car as quick as possible. But yeah, uh, I think for this one, I I, I was going to do a stint on the hard to middle stint. And then go back onto soft. But I think halfway through the stint, I decided that I was not going to stop again. So yeah, you might see a little bit of fuel saving in this and a little bit of a different driving style. But yeah, so I know murders could have happened there if I hadn't of like notice McMillan was going into the pits but yeah now we are chasing after Merlo so I mean it's a bit of a shame he ain't got the pace on this game because he's a good he's a good racer but I mean some game some people can drive certain games fast maybe, maybe this game doesn't suit his driving style I, I don't know but it's a shame not to see him like being quicker to be honest 
But as I said, like, <coughs> form, the Formula 1 game is maybe more to his taste. You never know, he could be up there battling with Limitless and all that on 2015. But well, as soon as they get the online sorted, and then we'll find out. But yeah, you never know. So yeah, lap 13 now. All the way up into uh, lap 20. Oh, here we go. Yeah, look, look at the lift and coast. I'm like lifting off like 50, 75 metres before the actual braking zone. But yeah, I mean, um, I knew it weren't so much the tyres that I was struggling with. It was getting the fuel to last. As you like, just the lift and coasting is real on this like now. Because the only way I was going to manage to possibly beat Shaw and possibly win the race and stay ahead of Atkins was if I didn't pit again. If I pitted again, I would have lost everything. So yeah, as you can see, a little bit of lift and coast as much as we can do, to be honest. The hard tyres that we're on are starting to let go, but when you've been, when you're looking to do about 21, 22 laps on them, what do you expect? So um, yeah, we just got to try and keep it together. I mean, I know Atticus is behind me, but I'm not so much focused on him being behind us. It's more of a case of I'm focusing on our lines, our driving to make sure that we can get to the end. But yeah, as you can see, lift and coast again. A little bit of understeer through this corner, which then gives him an advantage. I have to leave him in the room on the outside. I try and hug the apex. We get a little bit of contact there, but he didn't have the contact on his screen, which is... I'm, I'm not so fussed about it because he was so much quicker. I mean, if you look, the where he just pulls away is a joke. He's already in first, but Shaw's lost it. Lap 26, and Shaw has lost it. He's there on the outside though, but no, he ain't. He's dropped back a little bit. So now we might still be in with a chance of getting second place with his R. Oh, check, check out this late breaking, late breaking, and coasting into a corner because I can't fight him on sheer speed. So look, lift off, breaking as late as possible, getting the car stopped as late as possible, and sure decides to back out. I mean, I was, I was really having to like think about it think about it logically and like how much fuel i was gonna have left by and then just like whatever like it was crazy it was so it weren't just concentrating on the driving it was doing mental arithmetic whilst driving as well like my brain was fried by the end of this race but it makes for some great racing because you feel more involved with it rather than like F the old F like the f1 games sort of just drive around and there's not really much tactical thinking going on. I mean, there is when it comes to pit stops with undercuts and that, but not on the same level as this, with like lift and coast and changing strategy, like literally changing your strategy on the fly. But yeah, I mean, ah, oh, it's beautiful. And it, it, as I said, it adds so much more to the racing. It makes you feel so much more involved. But yeah, lap 28 now, we're coming around. Look at the grip that Shaw's got compared to me. I mean. If you can, I'm not too sure how clear this will come through because I'm looking at it on like a little preview box on um, Final Cut Pro. But my front tyres are literally either just above 80 or higher 79s. They've lost all temperature because I'm not driving, like I'm not driving that hard. I've got to, I've got to do another three, well, two and a bit laps on 8.3 liters of fuel. But here we go now. Shaw's gone for the switchback and he's got. Great drive off the corner. I'm not too sure how I'm going to be able to fight this one, to be honest. It looks like, yeah, he's part. He's already passed. So, yeah, just going to have to see if... Nah, and he's gone. He's gone, guys. He is gone. But, yeah, so now I'm moving ahead. Lap 29. It's not on that lap. Oh, Shaw's run a little bit wide. Oh, and he's lost it again. He's lost it again. But yeah, guys, we are coming in to some total and utter heartbreak. As you can see, our tires, our front tires are now cold as hell. We're locking up constantly. We've managed to get to the start of the last lap with just what is needed to do a lap round here in the McLaren. And then heartbreak of all heartbreaks. For no reason, we get disconnected. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Like this video if you did, and I'll see you next time. Peace.